Hi, hi, Srinath. Hi to all of our audiences. Uh, a lot said, in fact, just the previous panelists were speaking about the MSME sector. And of course, Srinath here has the more, I have his permission to call him Srinath, has the more difficult burden to take us through SME and MSME in the current status, the potential, and how can it actually contribute to the Indian GDP. My name is Noor. I am not an employee of PW Business World. I get to host these wonderful conversations because of that. And I've had the pleasure of interacting and working with Srinath in the past. So I can tell you, nobody could have had been a better choice for this, given his sure passion on this sector and the amount that he has written for us. I'm not gonna waste time and directly get into it because uh, it is him that we are here to listen to. Uh, Srinath, first, thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you for accommodating the session. Uh, you know, we have been talking about this for quite a bit. Why don't you just give us some numbers to put a perspective? SME from the current potential and rather from the current status and where what is the potential of this sector just to draw the line of what is this what is the gap we are trying to cross sure no, uh, thanks noor for a wonderful introduction and i think uh, to set the context uh, we're actually dealing with the lives and livelihood of uh, more than 11 crore indians who are employed in the sector uh, there are uh, six crore smes and msme uh, firms or single member unit units as well and this entire sector contributes to over 30% of our GDP. And guess what it does not have? It does not have the glamour value because we have industries who don't even contribute 1% to the GDP, but actually capture all the attention and the headline value that goes along. So the sector is not glamorous, but they have actually changed. They're what I call the real economy. They are actually the real economy who have been making this nation grow. And it has been for uh, ever since, I mean, even before independence on and so on. A comparison with China, 80% of their GDP comes in the last 30 years, 80% of GDP comes from SME and MSME. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that also showcases certain large volume. One of the uh, criticism that uh, economists have is can you really uh, have one single sector pivot in a high growth country? Can they contribute largely to the GDP? And yes, we have seen that MSME and SME can do it in China. And India is far more, uh, like the previous speaker spoke about, uh, the democratic value that India upholds, and I think that will allow us to have more equitable growth possible. But what I kept on hearing the word passion throughout the day, and you also alluded to my passion about the sector, uh, I wish it translates more uh, as passionate investments in the sector. Sadly, we only dis demonstrate compassion. We don't, we actually say it almost in a sad tone, saying oh, we'll have to bail out MSME, we'll have to bail out SME. I think the moment we can show the same amount of passion that we show for others and say that we, this is the potential, I think we'll be in a different sweet spot. All right. All right. Perfect. I want to kind of, you know, now move it. You've already kind of put there 80%, 30%. That's like massive. And, and, and as you rightly said, just the previous speaker and my colleague were kind of comparing on, uh, at one time, these were comparable numbers between the two economies. And now uh, the, the gap is too huge. You know, let's just bring this to the government point of view right now. The RBI did announce several schemes. We had the TLTRO, the uh, ECLGS, the PCGS. There was quite a bit that came came in uh, to benefit the MSME sector. Now, where, why do you think these are not already showing the kind of benefits? I keep reading that much is left to be desired uh, from their implementation. Now, why do you think that's happening? Why is it still not uh, making that mark or moving the needle? So I think uh, more importantly, uh, the last two years of uh, the COVID economy, we have had uh, a lot of uh, stimulus packages and uh, handholding packages, both RBI and the government of India have brought in. And I think uh, much credit to them for having brought it in on time because a lot of the uh, industry decimation kind of kind of stock. And we have also seen a recent uh, uh, State Bank of India research report on the sector of how it actually helped handle. Uh, are there proactive measures to enhance credit to the sector? No, not really. And I think that's where the uh, contrarian view that I would probably uh, profess is this. For example, the Indian banks by regulation have to lend to the priority sector lending. And uh, if, and uh, also agriculture comes under it. If PSL were not a norm, do you think those sectors would actually get credit? I have my own doubts. So can we look at something very, very contrary and saying that can we move out MSME and SME as a separate category and say, 
all regulated lending institutions have to provide say 3 to 5% compulsorily every year to the sec mm. can we then use that to enhance credit uh, access in the next 10 years probably yes so i think this is time for us to of course i can also uh, uh, let's say predict the uh, critiques for this idea to say uh, we are free markets and you cannot dictate what we have to do and all that i agree i, I completely agree but it's more a nationalist policy to say how do we encourage if 10 11 crore indians that's about uh, 9% of our population are dependent on one single sector for livelihood and this is not even a multiplier effect if i add their family members we are probably saying one third of indians are dependent on the sector for livelihood and growth and aspirations how do we grow as a nation right. so here i think uh, somewhere we'll have to think out of the box and i think uh, the larger than that will be the access to not only debt fund but also private equity capital i mean they really don't get access and as a previous speaker alluded to the next biggest startup or the wave would come from this sector yes but where is the uh, equity capital available it is not available so Are can it? we also look at putting together let's say innovation funds or uh, let's say uh, sme uh, uh, investment space where we actually start giving out of course with, with our bells and whistles around it actually fund startups in sme and msme when i say startup they need not be a fresh company but what do the smes currently need they want credit access they want growth capital they want to become export oriented firms they want to use digital to find newer consumers and newer markets they want to probably enhance their quality so that they are attractive their products and services are attractive for global audience all of this needs money it needs capital working capital everything so today when the guy is uh, literally on the brink of bankruptcy and to shut his firm to go and give him uh, let's say gyan about uh, private capital and risk appetite and all that won't cut ties so we'll have to stabilize the sector bring in access to debt bring in access to capital then growth capital and i think it's there but intent is there can we do it post covid as well perfect i can see that the next speakers are also already joining in <laughs> I think it happened to me in the previous session. I don't know what phase I was making though. Um, all right, fair enough. I got your points over here. Credit access and uh, liquidity crunch, basically. Uh, you know that that seems to be the the big problem areas. Now you said credit access, growth capital, of course. But apart from that, you've mentioned two other things: digital and global. I'm very keen to you know kind of get into this. While you said digital, but from a technology point of view, everybody has been calling calling this decade as the tech aid for India. I really don't know where that term came from. Kind of makes sense, but it should have. It should have enabled. It should have facilitated some faster growth modes than say. the decade before right now are you seeing um, enough happening from an ecosystem standpoint because msmes are also a very strong market or customer bucket for all the big tech companies are you seeing enough happening in cross play over there for them to be able to take advantage of some of the things available to them so i think here uh, it's very encouraging that the government of india itself is looking it has been working on the e marketplace to bring in uh, various handicrafts on board and stuff like that so one is that two i don't expect necessarily the large tech companies to come out and create marketplaces but i think yeah, it's encouraging to see a lot of our youngsters come with startups which are focused on bharat not uh, just india uh, <laughs> and it's not only for consumption but also to sell of sell those products abroad and stuff like that will it uh, scale up i think there is enough potential for scale but what i meant by export uh, export uh, oriented thinking or export competitiveness is can we make products for the world if i look at china uh, china has manufactured products for, for the world and it is not uh, come from uh, shanghai or beijing these are come from small towns and what the chinese model was actually picking smaller towns and creating probably hundreds of factories cotton and cottage industries for the same product which means that they figured out regional expertise in each of those zones and said let's go global let's go for scale let's go for quality which means we will have to have developed the ability to actually have quality audits can we handle the industry or the industry associations to say how do i check you for quality standards how do i make you better in terms of what do you communicate because if you actually realize most of the Chinese SME don't speak English, which is basic necessity when you deal with the global market. If they could crack this model because they knew that I am good at what I make, I could be making a simple 
uh, let's say, uh, paper cups. It's as simple as that of a certain grade and a certain quality type. But I know how to make millions of it on time, every time with lesser difference. So how do we create, uh, how do we have the scalability of expertise? That's one. And two, how do we really speak the global language? So when we think of manufacturing, we generally think of large factories. And I'm saying for a minute, we'll have to move away from the traditional thinking of large factories. Why can't our MSMEs and SMEs be our manufacturers for the world? For the world? For the world. I am not saying India. See, India mm -hmm. is uh, one way uh, to look at it is, is a consumption market. We have one-sixth of the world's population. But what if we actually use that one-sixth of the world's population as manufacturers for the world? You know, why, why, what holds us back? We, the global language cracking, we should have got it. Uh, ease of doing business in India, of course, there, you know, there are certain concerns, but that's incoming. For going outside, we, we should have got this plot, right? Why Not really. Let's that? say we make, uh, let's say we pick a small industry like um, uh, copper vessels. Uh, it's a simple example, a random one. And so we know what it means, uh, the copper vessel, forgetting the scientific value. We know the religious connotation or what kind of consumer markets uh, buy that in India. And we know the standard sizes. Let's say a size of 200 uh, milliliter of a, a copper tumbler. But the same size does not work for other markets, right? Uh, the simple paper cups example, if you take, uh, the measures are very, very different in different markets. So how do we actually educate that industry? How do we educate that industry? What will work for packaging? You just can't take a vessel, copper vessel and say, hey, pick this because this is what we use in India. Is there a different utilization, different style it is used in? Can we design those styles? Can we know how to package them? Can we know how to export them? Can we know how to get them grade tested, quality tested? Can we know what, did, what does it mean for rejects? What is the seasonality? What is the trends? When does it get sold? When does it get manufactured? I mean, everything is important. Today, would I expect somebody sitting in a small town to know this? Probably by anecdotally, they might know. Is there probably some of the industry associations might handle them uh, because some of the export houses and the MSME uh, associations would know. But are there any large industries there? They are not. I mean, the biggest of the SM MSME or the SME uh, association themselves would have a find it grow turnover. So can we bring about, uh, let's say, more from the government's point of view? There are regional uh, and local native intelligence that we have, sectoral experience that we have in SME and MSME. Can we collectively play to that string? Again, very copying a China model, saying that if there is something done, done in Uttarakhand and they're very good at that, can we make it scalable there? But there's no point in saying, I will copy that and also do it in Trichy in Tamil Nadu. There's a native intelligence there, there's a uh, inherent capacity, there's a weather pattern there, raw material availability. And can I play to that string? Is there a blueprint available in India for this now? I, I'm not aware of it. I think yeah. we'll have to put, work together. And this will also help uh, not only the union government, but also the individual state governments. Today, the state governments are struggling to enhance their revenue capacity. Right? Everybody wants to tweet and invite a large uh, global investor to India, to their state. But hey, you have uh, tons of talented people in your own state. And even if you can build their productivity and efficiency by 25% each, your state GDP probably could simply grow by 40 to 50% in the next five years. Perfect. Simple sum rule. We are saying that 30% of our net national GDP comes from SME and MSME. So if, we are, if I round off and I say we are at $3 trillion GDP, $1 trillion is coming from this sector. If we can enhance efficiency and productivity with small handholding, we simply take this one trillion without even adjusting for inflation or annual growth. We are taking them straight away to about 1.3 to 1.4. If we build credit access, can we double our capacity? I think so. We can double our capacity in three years. I mean, we'll grow at about 25% a year. Can if I build furthermore export competitiveness in the next five years? Can I triple this industry? Yes. So that 1.5 trillion, if I triple that industry, we're talking about 4.5 trillion coming only from SME and MSME. And who said it's a small industry? I'm just saying simple. Of course, uh, the critics might argue this is an Excel sheet game. Yes, it, everything is an Excel sheet game. Uh, the financial planning itself is an Excel sheet game. But if we put our might on it, then you're actually saying these 11 crore Indians who are today employed as MSME and MSME, can actually turn our GDP goal, not to 5 trillion. Let's then talk about 10 trillion. 
So I think that's where the growth is going to come from. And I think we are underplaying this entire sector. I mean, sadly, I mean, every year we will speak about MSME and SME just before the budget or during any fiscal stress. But otherwise, it's long forgotten and long uh, gone. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. In fact, the budget is coming up right now and we are already hearing so much conversation about the expectations for that sector. Let's see what happens. It should be like a, it should be like a popular budget this year. Let's see. Uh, you've given me some numbers already. And yes, it sounds really simple that if we can just do this, we double it and we get our visions of the 5 trillion and then the 10 trillion and, and all of that. But uh, if, if you had to just kind of bullet, pens, uh, bullet points summarize, we're on the last few minutes, maybe three, four minutes more to go. If you had a bo uh, ballpoint, uh, if you had to just point by summarize, uh, the steps that could take SME as a very major contributor to, towards any of the goal, say 5 trillion by 2025, um, how do you see that happening? So if I were to put a simple goal of any number, uh, I mean, it has to be a little stretch target. I don't believe in realistic targets because it's too easy. As a nation where we have responsibility of taking care of one-sixth of the world's population and we don't have one-sixth of the world's wealth, uh, yeah. We have to be stretched in our targets. And uh, I think we'll have to say that in the nation building exercise, all of us have to stretch and say, what is it that we can do to help and build? And uh, that's where the pride of national uh, nationalism has to come in, saying that, hey, this sector will grow. This is something that I can do. I will celebrate every individual. Today, we are un unfortunately celebrating industries or sectors. We don't celebrate individuals. And I think that we'll have to get down to that. I think I will have a simple... Uh, what I would call probably a 6C methodology. There are six Cs I think we'll have to uh, look at. I think capital, mm -hmm. we need to bring in a lot of it. Uh, I, I think incrementally. Compliance, uh, we'll have to reduce a lot of it. Competency building, again, what we spoke about, how do we train them to be export-oriented, quality aspect and all that. Communities, how do we actually create an ecosystem of communities? SME and MSME can be single-member company or five-member unit. But how do we bring them as a collective industry force? And that's when we, we realize the power of it. The fifth C, uh, C for me, which is different from capital, cap, is credit access. Mm. Capital is the risk capital. You know that if it may not work and you're ready to write off, credit is debt. So it's actually lending to leverage that business. The sixth one, I think more important would be connections. I think connections of all sorts. Every, every industry in India uh, has connections because the owner knows somebody, promoter knows somebody. It could be private sector or even government enterprises. You pick up the phone and speak to somebody. How do we build networks of connection, probably using digital, and say, you know what, I can create marketplaces. I can create cohorts, handholding cohorts. There's somebody who is into, uh, let's say, using banana fiber for shirts, making shirting. And can I connect them to, let's say, the banana plantation farmers in Kerala, so that there will be better value added pricing they would realize. We need to connect. Will the government do it or will there be startups who do it? I think all of this will have to emerge. But collectively, six Cs, I, I think we can be probably better, better place for our SMEs and MSMEs. I think that's also a brilliant way to almost wrap this. Um, uh, I loved that you said that we celebrate sectors, we don't celebrate individuals. And I think all my colleagues in the back end will tell you we at Business World really, really celebrate individuals. If you only look at our 40 under 40s and 30 under 30 lists, we probably are uh, very high on that count. And in fact, today we'll be celebrating some SMEs as well uh, who have done well in the year gone. The 6C is capital compliance, competency, communities, connection, and credit access before that. Uh, uh, that's a good way to leave our audience over here to something to think about. I also am bullish about the sector, maybe not as excited about you uh, as uh, you know some of the other people on the sector are, but uh, yes, definitely bullish. And I think I'm gonna get Aditya back. Aditya, it's a wrap from our end over here. Did we make it in time or do we still have some time? Thank you, No. Thanks, Aditya.